Brandon Benefield, Gerard Bonner, and Diana Michelle. What's up, everybody? It's that time of the week. It's Friday. You know what that means. It's time for your favorite podcast, the SHW Podcast. This is our wrestling. I'm B-Double Brandon Benefield, alongside the great Gerard Bonner, who's back, and the lovely Diana Michelle. How are you guys doing, GB? It's good to see you. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's good to see you guys as well. I hate that I was not with you last Friday, um, you know, but... I was on assignment, an important assignment, dare I say, spreading SHW love around the world. And so yeah. I saw yeah, you wearing was, the shirt in one of the pictures you had the podcast shirt on. So that I cool. definitely did. I told you we were there. I was making sure we were going to be yes. well represented. So uh, I'm excited about that. Just a great opportunity. And um, I'm super, super pumped. And where um, were you down in Jamaica? Uh, yes, was it Montego was in, Bay, right? Montego Bay, Jamaica. <clears throat> yeah, nice. it was a, a really cool space. And um yeah, some cool things are are cooking up. Some really really cool things are cooking up and I'm excited. So, yeah, it's it's always cool when you get the opportunity to kind of spread your wings and check out some other spaces as well. So, lots of fun, good times for sure. You guys can check out my whole recap on that uh on my own page, but I'm I glad love to your be recaps. Back. Thank you. I do. I love your recaps. I appreciate. It. I That's I so didn't realize funny. how many yeah, I didn't realize how many people were paying attention to it until uh, it was the I think it was the anniversary show or the show before where I was just randomly doing some stuff. And, you know, Ashton is just like, aha, the infamous TikToks. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> no, and you had you had all these cameos of people that were like wanting to jump in the backgrounds. Man, it was I so it. cool. It was so cool. So thank you, team, for for paying attention. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I, I've heard. Let me just say. I heard a whole lot about this show. A Ooh. whole lot. Really? I knew it was going to be crazy, but yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I've missed you guys. It's good to be back. Very, very awesome. Well, the, other than the pre-show last week, we had missed two weeks prior of right. our podcast. So right. the Three Musketeers are back, okay? We're getting back in our little swing. You yes. Know, you know. We took some days off, I guess. Yeah. Getting the band Whatever. back together. Oh, Getting yeah. the band back together. Oh, yeah. Put them oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. So I tell you we what, GB. You. Yeah, we definitely missed you uh, uh, over the last couple of weeks, but then especially last week at SHW 56. And of course, that's what we're doing here tonight. We're going to do the recap as we often do after our mm -hmm. big shows. Uh, and I will say he had some huge shoes to fill, but the one and only loudest mouth in the South former IWTV world champion, former SHW champion, the one and only AC Mack, filled in on commentary and on the uh, pre-show last week. Yeah. And uh, Diana, what'd you think? I thought he was a natural. He did a we, great job. Oh, my God. I, we had a ball. <laughs> you already know, GB. You already know. AC Mack sitting in, in the booth with me and Brandon. We had a freaking ball. You're he, natural. Yes, yeah. he totally yeah. was. He was not lost for words. For I love <laughs> I love it. He, he was on it. He was on it. I enjoyed it so much, so he much. Did. No, I, what I was it. what was great too, and I told him this uh, is that you know he's been gone. Has it been like I don't know five or six months? I, I don't remember yeah. the exact yeah. date of his farewell match, right. but it's mm -hmm. been a, been a minute. But what's cool about bringing somebody like him in is that he's so familiar with the roster. I mean, he was an SHW day one. That was yeah. his ho one of his homes, you know. And so the fans, yeah, the fans know him. The roster knows him. He knows them. So yes. that was uh, very helpful in the commentary booth. The fact that he kind of knew what was what and uh, joining us on the pre-show, he kind of got caught up on the, the different story uh, lines and different things nice. like that. So nice. he was good to go. And uh, man, it was, it was a lot of fun. He had quite a few trying to pick fights with him during the show too, which really? I'm like, y'all, he might be retired, but he ain't like incapable of whooping tail. Not he so kept hard. having to reiterate and I was reiterating too. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. he's here in a commentary capacity tonight. Everybody Thank settled you. down and he's he looking at people like, I'm retired. What are you what are you coming after me for? Oh, but uh, yeah, a handful of guys on the I roster. Put it past him, and Brooklyn as well. Brooklyn was giving him an earful at one point. It was just like, <laughs> come on. Insane. But uh, insane. Anyways, it was a wild night. Let's uh let's jump into this thing. If I can get my notes here. <laughs> this is where I rely on GB typically, but he wasn't there. So you know, that... I think I think GB will still have a good bit of knowledge about this whole show, even though he missed it. <laughs> right. It's a wild one. A well, wild one. it started out with uh, Shoot Taylor 
mm-hmm. and the Kenway one on one. You had both of these guys coming off of uh, a loss in that six man challenge the month before yeah. for the uh, JTS Legacy Championship, and both of them had been on a, a decent roll up to that point. And, and the other weird thing too, and I mentioned this on the pre-show and on the main show, was that over the last several months, it's almost like they've kind of flip flopped because you had Kenway who started out very popular, big fan favorite. Then started kind of turning to that dark side, doing some underhanded tactics, you know, kind of cheating to win and stuff like that. Whereas shoot, on the other hand, kind of started out that way and has slowly kind of become a fan favorite. And the theme song doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know, it gets everybody hyped up. I I want to say I feel like, you know, I would always say Owen would have the hypest theme song and got the crowd into it when I, Owen has switched that music. I feel like right. shoot might be taking that spot as far as some of the hypest theme music. Uh, when he comes to the ring. So, anyways, great opening matchup. Shoot, Taylor did come out on top. Uh, but it was kind of what happened after the match, Diana. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead and tell the folks about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, to go back into the match, I mean, like you said, Kenway had to do a little switcheroo, went from being the good guy, the well-liked guy, to being his punk. He's just acting like a punk. And he, he put that little chip on his shoulder and dared shoot to knock it off and, and shoot knocked it off. And um, it was, I don't, I don't want to say it was embarrassing for Kenway because if you, if you lose to shoot Taylor, it's not embarrassing. Right. I mean, shoot's awesome, right? What, what was embarrassing was what happened after. Was what happened after. Yeah. Um, Todd comes out and uh, pretty much runs down the hierarchy, runs down Joe Black, murder one, the whole clan of hierarchy and um then murder comes out he's got some choice words for todd oh but they but they both had choice words for kenway that's what was embarrassing yes, i, I almost i almost had, felt bad for kenway was reprimanded for being he just just being part of the well yeah todd reprimanded for being part of the hierarchy and then murder just reprimanded for losing and sitting in the ring crying about it Mm. I feel like you shouldn't do that if you're part of the hierarchy. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a standard. Well, and then of then it was like, then it was like murder was looking at, at, at uh, Kenway, like, oh, you're actually listening to Todd. You're not even listening to me. You're listening to Todd. It, it was a whole thing. And anyways, he like what? sent him to the back, you know? Wow. So he Kenway well, kind of sent him to the back and he went. Yeah. Kenway kind of tucked his tail and, and went to the back. And it was like, what is happening here? And then you get a face to face of murder one and Todd Sexton. Which in is the midst, scary. in the midst of that, the newest member of the uh, end game comes out, CT Keys, and kind of backs, you know, tries to get in the face of Murder One, and I'm like, oh, it's about to go down. Mm. I mean, Murder did not break down, down, not one bit. Lord, it got heated early on in that show, wow. early. Mm. Wow. Of course, that led us to uh, the next matchup with CT Keys being out there. We knew he was going to have a singles match with the returning Larry Lazard. Larry Lazard in his first singles match in <laughs> SHW, and I mean, even when this match was announced, I, I already kind of felt bad for Larry because you're coming in here with this powerhouse that is CT Keys. He's already fired up. He's part of the end game now, the newest member. And I, I feel like anybody he was going to face was going to be in trouble. Drag dog. It just happened Drag to be Larry Lazard, Larry Lazard. I mean, uh, it was a rough night. The rough night at the office for uh, rough... the classic Larry Lazard. That... That's and uh, it didn't last very long. I'd say maybe three minutes or less, something like that. And uh, yeah. yeah, it was a dominant was it showing. If, if, if it if that long, you said but, dominant. It probably felt maybe. like an hour with the beatdown. I mean, oh. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was bad. It's bad. <laughs> It was rough. You you said dominant. I thought Domino's Pizza. I mean, like it just kind of put me in hey, that whole mindset. But by the way, before you jump, before you jumped on TV, <laughs> Diana just had the delivery, and I was like, "Ooh, oh wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Anyways. That is awesome. <laughs> very very sponsor. interesting. Yeah, hey, we can use that sponsorship. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> we will take it. Wow, 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 wow." Sounds very, very interesting. This whole Kenway thing. Yeah. Hmm. For somebody who has referred to himself as the infinity stone of the hierarchy to kind of tuck your tail between your legs and walk away, that's not very hierarchy-ish. But it was weird. It's like he had this look on his face like he was really angry, but Mm. almost like, but he was defeated. Not only has he been defeated in the match, 
mm-hmm. but just his self-esteem or something was defeated. Like it just seemed mm-hmm. very unusual. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't quite well, sure what to make of it. He came into SHW very confident. Extremely very, confident. very confident, and he spoke very highly of himself mm-hmm. and his goals, only to find with every single match at Southern Honor. It's not happening. It's not happening the way he planned. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know what his, what his standings is with the hierarchy, but I don't feel good about it. Well, the way murder one dressed him down in the ring, I, it wasn't looking too good that night, at least. Oh boy. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but then you got CT keys, Larry Lazard, uh, coming up after that, you had that five team tag team gauntlet. Mm. I might go out of order here a little bit, but I think that was next. Go, go uh, but yeah, That's you had the five team tag team gauntlet. GB, this was nuts. This was this absolutely was wild. And uh, I believe Paul Santa had the officiating duties for this matchup. And yeah, I did not envy him one bit because it was such, such chaos. They thought it had been team, one team at the other instead of a cluster. Because it, wow. It so the first, yeah, first group that came out, of course, Exotic Puke. And uh, please tell funny. me who, lost, who, who got eliminated first. Tell me. Well, they also got it. Not only were they the first team out, they were the first team eliminated. It's ah. funny too, GB, because I told, I looked at Mac and I said, "You know, Mac, normally this is the part of the show where I just let GB go because I can't stand talking about these guys." <laughs> and uh, but you know, we man, we managed the the worst part about it was, uh, Bryce uh, was not in the match. He was wearing his street clothes, and he had Pepperbottom mm-hmm. and Zach Mosley uh, doing the tag team duties for the match, mm-hmm. which meant Bryce made his way over to the commentary booth. And oh. uh, try to jump in a little bit on the commentary, which was just, just oh my, yeah. You 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 can just guess how how I felt about Sounds that. Sounds like but, must uh, see TV. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, they ended up getting eliminated first. They started out the match with a Kudo Death Society: Kevin Ryan, mm. Chris Crunk. Yeah, they would advance very to the next showing. team. Very, yeah, great, very good great showing from them. But what was crazy was as soon as they eliminated Exotic Youth, all three members of Exotic Youth got in there. Bryce had the paddle. They beat down a Kudo Death Society, and there was really no wait time in between teams. Mm. So the next team out was Coven of the Goat. You had Tank and the Killbilly, and wow. they went right in there. And unfortunately for Kevin Ryan, Tank immediately hit him with that Saido suplex, and that was all she wrote. Yeah. So they had a great showing against Exotic Youth, eliminated Exotic Youth, and then got eliminated in no time when they were in there with uh, Tank and the Killbilly. Mm. And then... Nice. And then the grapplers, I believe, were next, right? The grapplers who so, we remember, mm-hmm. they were both in the uh, yes. Rumble Jack. Mm-hmm. They are the current, uh, well, they're mainly from Anarchy Wrestling. But they're the current right. NCW tag champs, the current Southern Fried tag t- champs. So they came out draped in gold, and uh, they uh, put up a heck I of a fight. I did not know they were Southern Fried tag team champions. That did they beat Happy Madness for that? I get. I mean, that's another promotion. We won't talk too much, but I just they? and I'm not. I'm you know, I forgive no me. Idea. I just don't keep up with all the other promotions necessarily, <laughs> at least not the, that it's much. So, you know, I keep tabs here and there and I see stuff online, but I'm I'm not at the shows. I don't know what's what. And so I'm not sure who had the tag titles last before the grapplers got them at uh, Southern fried. I'm not sure, but yeah, we'll have to research that. they, uh, you know, we had a crazy time GB. You would have enjoyed this as well. Cause Mac and I, couldn't figure out which one was grappler one and which one was grappler two <laughs> um but i feel like that's an ongoing thing at every promotion they're a part of mm-hmm. there's no like right. uh something on their gear to, to signify which one's which mm-hmm. they just look Not exactly like the bella like. twins where they can switch out without being yeah. noticed yeah. twin magic <laughs> yeah there's a, a lot of twin magic going on with the grapplers <laughs> um but uh yeah and then uh then of course let's see the grapplers end up getting eliminated and then happy madness comes out so that's kind of what a lot of people I think were excited to see happy madness and the covenant of the goat, because you got to kind of get a replay of the kill Billy and sunny days. That's right. great. I, th- I thought that was wild. What'd you think, Diana? It was great. I mean, I, I think at the beginning in the pre-show, I was talking about how I've not seen tank and Nathan in a match that wasn't bloody, that, mm-hmm. that didn't have weapons that didn't go into that death match match vein, but they were a tag team in this gauntlet. And they performed as a tag team in this gauntlet, and it was amazing. They can do anything. It was it was great. Wow! I think they they really took it to Sunny Days and Sal Renaro, and mm, I mean, I want to see them again. I want to see this whole matchup again. 
and, and yeah. maybe maybe we will maybe we'll soon i don't know but it, i'm 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 a i'm a covenant of gold <laughs> it was fan here <laughs> it was cool to see nathan <laughs> crazy for me to say but yeah <laughs> it was cool to see nathan uh actually get in there and wrestle yeah like you said we're so used to seeing him death matches or hardcore no hold bars Boy. whatever you want to call it and i think i even said at one point uh during the match he had been in there for i don't know five ten minutes and i said you know this might be the longest i've ever seen him in a ring without a bunch of weapons no. or right. or a bunch of no. like Blind, a car crash and on yeah. fire right so so that was pretty wild but uh of course happy madness ended up coming out on top so they are now call them the number one contenders call them what you want but the the stipulation was they they get a future title shot i don't know if that will be december 8th at our next show or if it'll be sometime later but they won the five team gauntlet so they will get a future tag team opportunity a chance to become two-time tag team champs at southern honor wrestling is that right they've only had it once so far correct that's right mm -hmm. yes that one time was just a very long time that's right yeah it just seems like it was multiple yes. because they didn't defend it right well, right right i don't want to get into the whole dishonor <laughs> thing but there was a whole yeah. it's just going to get me irritated difficult you know? time yeah it was we were all going through some tough times back then yes there so, tough times. <laughs> uh speaking of which and we'll get there at some point but of course cruel and brooklyn were both part of this show as well and mm. uh we'll get to that here in just a few mm -hmm. minutes but what was kind of crazy was after the tag team gauntlet exotic youth come back out and they're pitching a fit and they're fit to be tied. And they're all three in the ring, just going, just whining. They pitching get on the microphone. Fit. Yeah. They pitching get on the mic. Screaming. They're mad at Jake, the snake for putting them first in the gauntlet. And it wasn't fair. And woe is me and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden we get a surprise on the video screens back behind us. And it's none other than SHW zone, the infantry. Ah. John Dean, Carly Bravo, calling out Exotic Youth and saying they've already got it booked. They talked to Jake the Snake, and it's booked for December 8th, SHW 57. We're going to see Exotic Youth versus the Infantry, and it's going to be good to have those guys home, and yeah. I cannot wait to see them just lay those boots <laughs> to Exotic Youth. It's going to be good. I know, Diana, you were excited to see that. I was totally excited. I was jumping up and down screaming while they were talking. I didn't get to hear everything they said. <laughs> but to see Exotic Youth in the ring with their mouths dropped open in like disbelief that they're going to have to face the infantry was money, yeah. money. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I can't wait to December. I can't wait. It's going to be, it's going to be fire. Yeah, what good. a great way to end the year to have the infantry back with us. And you know, we remember, and and I'm sure as we get to that point and following that show, we'll probably talk about the year that was 2023. But mm -hmm. one of the biggest moments of 2023 was watching Carly Bravo get the news that he is all elite inside of an SHW ring. So yeah. to have him come back, you know, now having done all that he has done at Ring of Honor. Uh, to come home, both of them, and to have this match on December the 8th. That's going to be incredible. You guys are not going to want to miss that. Mm -mm. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, I said it on commentary, and I say it fairly often, even though it kind of makes me want to throw up in my mouth when I do say it, <laughs> because I hate giving any kind of accolades to exotic youth. But the thing is, when they're not using their underhanded tactics and their cocky attitude and all this stuff, they are great wrestlers. If they could mm -hmm. just get in there and use their wrestling skill, and win that way, I wouldn't have a problem with them. But it's the attitude, it's the underhanded tactics, drives me up the wall. I know it drives it's Diana crazy. Skin, I know, it's just... But, point being... Like you rash. If they can show out like they can, and then we already know what infantry can do, mm -hmm. this has the makings of potentially a match of the year at the very tail end of the year. So right. it, it might get in just under the, uh, the line there to mm -hmm. be a, a contender for a match yeah. of the year, so... And I, I'm trying to think, I don't know how often, if at all, does, has a match of the year ever been a tag team? I'm sure it's been a tag team match at some point, right? Or no? I will double check. I'd that. have to, yeah, know. go ahead and research that. I, I, I do I not know the answer to that. If, if, if um, they do have tag team matches that have been matches of the year, it, it's not often. It's usually a singles right. match. But yeah, I just think. This uh, could be a great one. And it'd could, be fresh. Yeah, yeah. This could be one that could uh, be a contender. So we'll see. But uh, moving on down the card, we had... Well, I'll oh. go back. We actually oh, yeah, go did ahead. have a tag team match of the year. It was 2021, 
the Duck House Brawl. Ah, oh, yes. Right. The, the Ugly Ducklings and and exotic, exotic youth that's right so that's we, right we could have the possibility that exotic youth could do it again it's possible there you go well they have the makings of being a bad day or whatever so yeah <laughs> <laughs> well moving on down to car we had hollywood hunter james he was back in action against the returning rob killjoy you mm -hmm. mentioned the ugly ducklings yeah one of that. the ugly ducklings rob killjoy was back in the building who always puts on an incredible show mm-hmm uh, this was a great singles match. And uh, you had Tristan Michaels on the outside, the manager for uh, Hollywood Hunter James, who caused a little bit of distraction here and there throughout the match. But, uh, man, what a great match. Hunter uh, James coming out on top. And uh, was it afterwards? I think he was trying to cut a promo. Uh, and then Alexander Lev shows back up. Now, how this guy keeps getting in the in the building and how not only in the building, but given a microphone <laughs> i don't know i don't know how but anyways he gets in there he starts talking trash running down the crowd and calls out fluff now gb i'm not sure if you're familiar with fluff yeah you know aka fluff. cody yeah. fluffman he's yeah. a tag Fox team yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ex yes. exactly with sean legacy uh so he's just sitting in the crowd now he has been back and a lot of fans may not realize this he's been backstage at a lot of our shows Never been booked on our show, never wrestled on our show, mm -hmm. but he's been in the building before. A lot of the uh, the roster backstage knows him. Uh, fans of indie wrestling in the Southeast know him. And uh, yeah, for some reason, Lev <laughs> called him out. He was just sitting in the crowd watching the show. And Fluff, you know, came through the guardrail, took his shirt off, ready to go, ready to throw down. And security <laughs> had to pull him back. And uh, so I don't know what that means moving down the line, but it looks like... Uh, that could be setting some up for the future. And I, again, I don't know how soon. Speaking of, by the way, speaking of matches that have already been booked for December 8th, Lev did let us know that he has already been booked against Rob Killjoy for December 8th. So we'll see that at SHW so 57. His first wow. officially booked match. There you go. Yeah. Because wow. he always ends up in something impromptu. So. Exactly. Well, so. What I'm curious to find out is, you know. What's he addicted to? Well, <laughs> there's Bankful that. Tips? But at what point is there going to be more money put into the security of SHW? Because <laughs> we I have had be for somebody years, paid them to let Fluff through. I, I mean, be yeah. between Fluff, I mean, we can go back to 2020 and, uh, you know, how certain people broke into our podcast. Then they found their yeah. way in the back door of of the one of the biggest cards of the year rumble jack like you know th there's an old an old saying and i'm just gonna say it the way it was said who in the hell left the gate open right <laughs> like who left the gate open what is happening around these parts how do these people just you know people get how does lev he's gotten in the last five shows like, does yeah. he know the pin code or something? Well, he is somebody, it's an old building, okay? There's cracks somebody and cracking the door. everywhere. I was gonna say somebody must have cracked the door open or something. I I don't I don't understand, but we gotta beef up security around these parts because he might live under the building. Who knows? He's just... Who who knows? Well, I you mean... saw, you know, Corey, the great Corey Tatum, wrestling snapshots, was doing photo yes. shoots backstage, and you saw the one I posted, somebody that Got back I to was going to mention that. How did he get in the building? We'll, we'll get right? to him later because he was yeah. a part of the show later. But uh, just like I said with Lev, somehow he keeps getting in. And not just that, he keeps getting a live mic somehow. Uh, well, anyways. in my defense, because I am in control of the mic or my mic. Your we mic. We do have two. Right. And one is always floating because somebody's going to need it. And I don't like to share my mic. I don't. I was not blaming must, you because I know it's, out, it's right, the backstage no, mic. Yeah. found out where it is stored and just... You know, like I said, he gets in there after the show and he's just creeping around the building at night, finding his little <laughs> ways and, and hiding spots. Maybe he just found where we heard him. I don't know. He's a creepy little guy, dude. I'm gonna start he is. I'm gonna start calling the action building an English muffin because of all these nooks and crannies around here. <laughs> like it's just crazy how you can just slide in and slide out and nobody can know you're there <laughs> until you're in the middle of the ring with a live mic. I mean, just walking yeah. out. Unreal. By the way, just to go back real quick, uh, when Hunter, after his match, you know, he got on the mic, he won his match. And of course, what's he talking about? Chip Day. So he had, mm -hmm. if you recall, yeah. back at the uh, anniversary show after mm -hmm. chip successfully defended his jts title in that six-man uh, challenge 
took a brain buster from Hunter sure James did. up there on the stage. Mm -hmm. Shades of what Chip usually does to his opponents. Absolutely. And so, uh, I'm thinking is the reason why Chip was not in the show because he took the brain buster. Maybe he yeah. wasn't cleared. I believe he wasn't cleared them. until just we after. We missed you, Chip. We missed you. Yeah. yeah. I believe he was cleared like a day or two after SHW 56 mm -hmm. and right. unfortunately just missed out right. on, uh, cause we thought if he's here, there's no chance <laughs> he's going to let Hunter James get out of here unscathed. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, of course he did. And I'm like, well, then Chip's not here because yeah. come hell or high water. If he was in the building, it was then oh my you, gosh. you knew it. Yeah. You bad knew it boy be would be on the war path. Bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do? Uh. What you going to do? <laughs> Hunter James, what you going to do? So, <laughs> We will see when the bad boy comes for him <laughs> because it's not going to be good a good day for Hunter James. And Mac was even saying that with us on the pre-show when he, when he was – we were kind of filling him in on what had happened at the at Still Here. And he's like, Chip Day? You go after Chip Day? Are you crazy? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Death Better place. learn something. So he's going to learn today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all right, well, moving on down the card, we had – Well, uh, Matt did his promo somewhere in there. Cruel, let's see, Cruel. Oh, yeah. So Matt Griffin was with Rico Gonzalez, right? Mm. He he accompanied him to the ring. And mm. it did turn out it was an IWTV World <coughs> Championship match. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't initially uh, promoted as such. But then we found out, well, Cruel has said, I don't know if he speaks. I don't know how they found out. But whatever it was. He grunts. Whenever, I asked whenever him a Cruel, question and he grunted. So Basically, I, I it's whenever it. Cruel is in the mat, in a match. It's an mm -hmm. IWTV World Championship match. He's defending mm -hmm. the title, which I can respect. Mm -hmm. I love that. If you got a belt, you're going to defend it anytime you wrestle. You mm -hmm. know, you back in the day, and even still currently in some of the big promotions, it's always like non-title match, non-title match. It's like, no, nah, man, if you're wrestling, he just defeated line? this guy in the middle of the woods and burned him alive for this title. Of course, yeah. he's going to defend it. So yeah. yeah, that was another weird thing, GB, that we were a little concerned about. Just like three days prior on Halloween night. Mm -hmm. uh i was concerned i was like are the police gonna be here looking for this guy is he wanted for murder what's going on here because he according to them cremated a guy uh matt Jeez. tremont by the way is who we're talking about mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. did you see recently the recent pictures that are floating around no i have not I have not well get online and check it out because now i'm pretty sure it was matt tremont wearing what looked like a similar to a cane mask and he was oh. side by side with cruel and i'm like no, wait a second. Oh. I thought he was a goner. <laughs> so, wow. anyways. Monsters uh, don't die, Brandon. I, well, yeah, apparently not. But, uh, I, yeah, I was blown away. I was like, he's got a mask on, but I feel wow. like that might be Matt Tremont. I could so be wrong. this means clearly that there's no more dispute about the IWTV World Championship. Well, not not pertaining well, to never Matt been Griffin, because he still says Cruel is not the champion, but we all know he's full of crap. Because Cruel is yeah. the IWT. Well, see, that's, that's what's crazy. Griffin Griffin comes in and he says that. But then if his guy were to defeat Cruel and take then the belt, what? then all of a sudden I guarantee you he would say, oh, now this is the exactly. real. But, you know, we, we've we always known it's the real belt. come out there and, and, and just talk a bunch of crap, but he brought a Bible. Like, was reading scripture about, what is it? being hypocrites and stuff and i'm thinking he boy. read scriptures about being a hypocrite his whole yeah. thing was that the crowd was cheering cruel and cruel just killed a guy three nights ago but you guys are cheering it and we're in a church yeah. and blah 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 you know it was a yeah. he was just really laying it in just typical matt griffin laying it in it thick was, it was being thick and i and i actually questioned that it was a real uh bible but then he shoved it in my chest like i was supposed to hold it and oh I checked it out and I had to see what the scripture if they were actually the real words of the mm -hmm. the holy word, but mm -hmm. and they were, and that scared me even more. This man was mm -hmm. holding his Bible. Well, well, I will say it was a uh, just like earlier. I talked about it being a rough night at the office for Larry Lazard, mm -hmm. also a rough night at the office for one Rico Gonzalez. Now here's where it got a little weird, GB, because my commentary partner that night was yeah. a little bit uh, not oh. sure. He was a little in a weird spot. Let's yeah. put it that way. Well, That's yeah. safe to say. So it was kind of a weird, and same thing when the action title was on the line, you know, because Mac, yeah. his home away from home, SHW is his home, but his home away from home was action wrestling at one He's point. the longest reigning action <laughs> champion. and He so... held that title the same time he held the Southern Honor title. You know, there's a lot of connections there. So, yeah. 
but it was uh yeah anyways rico uh unfortunately for him uh he 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 did walk out the referee helped him he was on his feet he was able to okay. get out uh but he did not win the match clearly That's uh but than matt tremont so yeah, yeah. but yeah. What we did get to see, GB, and I'm I'm sorry you missed this. I hope our cameras caught it. Uh-huh. Uh, we'll find out when it uh, uh, shows up on IWTV. But we got to see the front row dive again from Matt Griffin as uh, Cruel chased him out of the building. Yes. And not just out of the building. Like, I don't know how far Impact chased him with the video camera. Oh, wow. But I heard that they went, like, around the, the building. Tracks. <laughs> oh, the wow. Tracks. Like, yeah. around the building. Wow. So he, you know how impact how agile he is and just quick yes. and he was like, Man, yeah. I was running out of breath. I had to stop chasing him. So he turned around <laughs> and came back. <laughs> <laughs> and so we didn't know where it they was ended up. Gone. We didn't wow. know where they ended up, but what we do know was that the uh, next matchup was gonna be I mentioned for the uh action wrestling world championship, mm-hmm. Adam Priest defending against the star of the show, Ashton Star. Of course, Priest being accompanied by Brooklyn. Which is still so weird to me after a few months ago when she turned on uh, her husband, Cruel. Uh, and so she accompanied him, uh, accompanied Priest to the ring. Great match. Great, it was. great match. It was. Uh, I could watch these guys wrestle all night. And and I said it before, we've talked about this before. Adam Priest is incredible. Is. I love watching him when he wrestles at SHW. <clears throat> Unfortunately, over the last few months, he's so aligned with action. Of course, he's their champion. Yeah. So he's automatically if the end game is enemy number one, then anybody from action is is enemy number one point nine or one point five. Yes. Yeah, whatever you want to yes. say. Because yes. uh yeah, besides the end game, action if you're from action mm-hmm. and that's the thing, unfortunately for Rico. Rico, great athlete. I was excited to finally see yeah. him wrestle at SHW, but right. he was there representing action. So the crowd was just all over him. Mm-hmm. Uh and understandably so. Yeah. But same thing with Adam Priest. And this was a great, great matchup. Um, of course, Adam Priest would retain the title. Uh, but afterwards, chaos ensues once again as all of a sudden coming from the back, but not from the, the entranceway, but from the side door from the back. Here mm. comes uh, uh, Matt Griffin again with Cruel still hot on his tail. But by the time they got in the ring, Cruel was outnumbered. This guy called The Wall. I don't know if you're familiar with him or not, GB. He's from Action Wrestling. And he's I've big. never seen anybody manhandle cruel before, but this he dude is, is as tall as cruel and just a big, I mean, and he, he was, he, he choke slam him, body slammed him. And he was, he was, he put him down. Yeah. He put him down. It was eye opening. Wow. It so was. what was crazy was once they had him down and he had like the wall kind of holding them on his knees. They got you remember the branding iron they had uh, yeah, a yeah Adam few months ago? Adam lit the branding iron on fire. He was gonna brand him. And he was that close. He almost had him like chest first wow. and he lit and it on fire. And... Brooklyn stops him. Um I'm, I'm still I'm confused, really. Again, as if we weren't confused the last time when this whole thing first started, even more confused. She didn't stop him like no, 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 no. She didn't stop him like that. It was more like wait a minute, let's save this for another time kind of thing. Yeah. So it wasn't like she was trying to save Cruel. It was just she wanted to, to wait and do it. Was it so, at, uh, was it, what, what was the promotion? ICW or something? I, I think yeah, is what Chattanooga. It was. So they were going to be facing each other in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. And so <laughs> apparently that was what Brooklyn whispered in Adam's ear to stop him was, you know, maybe let's save this for there. I don't know. I'm just glad it didn't happen. Well, she there. didn't want him to burn him so that he couldn't make it to that. Yeah. That mm. So, yeah. I mean, it was close. It's, they almost. It got was. Him. I mean, I'm talking about the flames were. Yes. No, you talk about all the action building being on the edge of our seats. We were all like, "Oh no, 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 don't do it, don't do it!" Wow. Oh, wow. it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. What was after that? Tag team championship match, I believe, is what was next. And this was a wild one. Because yeah. it almost it almost didn't happen, GB. I'll just put it oh, that wow. way. <laughs> we had the end game basically attacking Murder uh, Murder One and Joe Black before the match, mm. and specifically Murder One. And I still wasn't sure if it was his elbow or his shoulder, one or the other. They just were beating it down, beating him down, and he couldn't go. So the well, officials before took the bell. His... They were out there, but it was before yeah. the bell. Right. So, yeah. So then Todd, and I don't know how true this is, but Todd 
Uh, even though the bell hadn't rang, murder couldn't go. Joe's checking on the officials are going to take him to the back. Todd gets on the mic and says, oh, well, if you didn't read the contract closely, it says if you have to forfeit the match, you lose the tag titles. And so he's announcing the end game as the new tag team champions. And Joe Black's like, whoa, 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 wait a second. He goes down there, and then it's a two-on-one match. He defends mm. the titles by himself uh, on one. against. He's his ringside. Todd is ringside. So it's yeah. just the whole the yeah. whole group against Joe. It was wild. He held his own, man. Oh, my God. That not, is a, a, not only did he hold his own, he successfully he defeated the Anarchy Champion and the Southern Honor Champion yes. and, and retained the SHW Tag Team titles. Now, yeah. Murder One did come back towards the end of the match, but really just more so to cause Never a bit of a distraction. Him. He was but wrapped it, up. He was iced and wrapped yeah. up. And it was more so to maybe kind of cause a bit of a distraction, allow Joe to uh, get the win and take out uh, both Nick Halen and Judas. Uh, and it was insane. And then, of course, afterwards, you know, they've retained. And then Gary Lamb's music hit. We haven't heard his music all night, surprisingly. Oh. And at this point, we're in what, like the co-main event, match mm -hmm. seven at this point. He comes out, says he's been watching backstage, says, you know, I kind of forgot just how dominant Joe Black is. I kind of forgot that he basically he's carried this company on his on his back for two years. And as he's saying that, I'm thinking to myself, we didn't forget. No. <laughs> right. You might have right. forgot. None of us forgot. Right. So Never, ever. But I was very excited to hear uh, that Joe Black will now be receiving a championship shot at Judas on December 8th at SHW 57. So mm -hmm. just like Judas went into this show uh, at 56, where he could have come out as a double champ, now Joe Black has the opportunity of perhaps coming out of 57 as a double champ. Not only the tag team champ, but also the Southern Honor <laughs> champion. So, uh, man, that's going to be awesome i cannot wait for that match yeah that that's gonna be incredible and i'm already excited i've seen the poster and the poster is amazing oh my um, god like it's it's yeah. pretty sick you know the irony though that it will be nearly three years to the day yep that Joe Black relinquished the mm -hmm. SHW championship and so for things to be able to come full circle in this moment will be really powerful and I think he has an incredible chance of coming out as SHW's first double champion. I'd like to see it happen. Of course, it all goes down December the 8th. I can't wait. It's going to be incredible. Mm -hmm. oh, it's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. And I just, you got to think he's got that momentum. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. After single-handedly defeating, like I said, not only the Anarchy champ, Nick Halen, but the Southern Honor champ, Judas, mm -hmm. two-fourths, well, one-half of the end game. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. just incredible. What a showing. Uh, just digging down deep and just pulling out all the stops. I was mm -hmm. so well, pumped that he pulled that you remember, off. You remember how Joe was just kind of the silent member of Dishonor? And not to yes. bring up Dishonor again, but how we, we talked about he didn't do any promos. He was just quiet. Mm -hmm. He did what he was supposed to do and what they expected him to do, but he didn't, like, stand out to do anything, you know, major in the group he, he was there he was definitely there he was he was he was a main guy but he didn't do a whole lot he's got his swagger back he's got his his attitude his everything that is joe black is is in full force right now and and it is great to see i i, I can't wait for this match i can't wait i mean to die as joe you know i mean it's gonna be amazing it's crazy. You know, you've got my brain working, and I think back to, you know, 2020, particularly going into Rumble Jack 2020. And we know, you know, 2020 was a bit of a kooky year, but one thing for sure is that's where, you know, that kind of seemingly fluke injury happened to right. Joe Black. He would go on to win the championship and try to hide that injury as much as he could. You know, we can always speculate and wonder. What would have happened had mm -hmm. Joe Black not gotten injured? You know, he would, could still be the champ. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. He yeah. could still be the SHW champion. And so, you know, you talk about getting his swagger back, having to come back from injury and wonder, could he still do it? And then, you know, connect himself with uh, dishonor and the like. It took him going back to his roots to rediscover mm -hmm. who he actually is. It's funny. Because you can look at a person and you can know their greatness, but if for whatever reason they don't know it, 
then it won't hit the same. Right. And so we're literally seeing a guy figure out exactly who he, remember, he didn't even want to be called the killer weight anymore. Right. Like he literally was just like, that's not me. I'm happy. I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. But he's found that thing that made him two-time wrestler of the year, that thing that has made him the undertaker of independent wrestling. If that guy shows up on December the 8th, mm-hmm. look out end game because it will be the end of the game. Right. It's going to be good. Going to be so- good. I cannot wait. Uh, and here's the thing. On top of that, on top of an already insane night to that point, we still had our main event, which was the three stages of hell, Nogicism versus Owen Knight. And I tell you what, it was everything it was built up to be. It was crazy. First match, your standard standard singles match, uh, pinfall or submission inside the ring. Second match was going to be a, or the second uh, stage of hell, I should say, uh, was going to be a false count anywhere. And then, of course, if necessary, the third stage was going to be an I quit match. Now, uh, you had Naja, who and the, the opening was was solid. And I was telling Mac this on commentary. These guys, this has been going on for about a year. Uh, yes. I mean, it was all the way back. Was it November when the original uh, Best of Seven series started? That's Southeast right. Best of Seven. Uh, and then aside from that, that went on for a few months. Then they mm-hmm. battled all over the Southeast, other promotions, also in SHW, uh, just all over know each other so well uh they were even a formidable tag team short-lived that it may have been uh they were a formidable tag team there they even earned a a a tag team title shot at one point of course that's where we saw owen turn on nausea and uh, that's where this whole dark side of owen knight has uh come about and it's been that way ever since i'm sorry yeah sorry bad boy (laughs) that i I can't call you can call him that i feel weird calling (laughs) uh but uh yeah, it was uh, that opening matchup, great in ring, but they know each other so well. So I even told Mac, I said, we could be here all night just for this first stage of hell. I mean, this could mm-hmm. go on and on and on, yeah. but it ended up uh, Naja was able to come away. Uh, I believe was it like an inside cradle or a quick roll up or something. Mm. Uh, it's kind of just shocked everybody. Yeah. Um, and then the second fall, second stage, like I said, was going to be false count anywhere. And they went all over the place. And of course, uh, Naja ended up eating a clock out up on the stage on a steel chair. And, uh, of course, balls count anywhere. So Owen pinned him up there, got the second uh, stage. So it was 1-1. So we had that, uh, you know, tiebreaker, third stage of hell, which was an I quit match. Hmm. And I thought they went all over the place for the false count anywhere portion. Now they really went all over the place for this third stage. Now, Diana, help me out here because we were tethered to our headsets at yeah. the commentary booth. So Mac and I were really struggling trying to see what all was going down. I know where cameras caught it. So once we can go back and watch it on IWTV, you can even hear us saying like sounding confused because we can't really see what's happening, but we know the cameras are catching it all. Yeah. You know, Mac standing up in his chair at one point, I get up in the chair at one point trying to see, uh, they're just all over the place. But from your perspective, you were able to move around a little bit. What all were you seeing? Heads, just heads. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Because they were, they were all over the place. And you guys know where uh, the tap that guys are usually over in that, that front corner by the sound booth. Yeah. And that's where the fight went. And and it was, I heard smacks of fists and skin. I mean, it was just, you know, no love lost between these two. It was the third stage of hell. They were giving each other hell. It was, it was crazy. And the fans just, you know, they disperse and they come back and they disperse. And it's just wild. Next thing you know, where'd Nadja go? Naja just disappears. There's a table. He's got Owen laid out on a table, but Naja disappears. He goes out the front where the merchandise is, comes up, climbs a ladder, and he's up on top of the wall. You remember where Nathan was uh, the last mm-hmm. show, maybe? Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's up on top of the wall. And and tell me why Owen quit. I So here's the thing. and I, Before and I found, he even jumped. I found this out later because I saw some pictures and some, some fan videos uh-huh. He apparently, so they pulled out the table. Owen gets laid on the table and gets, I don't know if he was strapped or tied. There was something that like strapped him to the table where he couldn't oh, escape. See, and he saw that. that Naja was up there ready to jump through him, through the table, through Owen Knight. And he, just, yeah. he, and just he said, real quick, uh, you know, Prater was right there with the microphone. And Owen well, just said, I quit. And he's he just said more there. than just I quit. But 
Mm. Well, yeah, there was. Uh... I will. I will leave that to you guys to watch back on our DVTV because. Wow. And whether or not it gets bleeped out, I'm not sure. But there were definitely some expletives uh, mm. spoken. Yes. But <laughs> wow. uh, we'll just leave it at that. Um, but I feel like Owen doesn't believe that that oh that uh, Naja was the victor. He just let it go because he didn't want to get hurt in that particular situation. Mm. Well, so and he could have. And I said on commentary because it was a little confusing because uh, Owen says and. It, it, I say it's confusing. It's it's Owen's new mentality, I think, is what it is. Uh, he says, I quit because he saw him about but, to jump and he knew he couldn't move. But, but he says, but I'm still better than you. You're not better than me, blah, blah, blah. And the thing is, I'm thinking, well, he beat you in the best of seven and he just beat you in the three stages of hell. So how is he not now considered better than you? Because uh, but, when Collins does not make the man. That's, that's the case. So that's anyways... It. He said his piece, and Naja, even though the match was officially over, came off the wall anyway, crashing through Owen Knight, crashing through the mm -hmm. table. Owen or uh, Naja makes his way to the ring, standing victorious. Your winner for the night. I mean, it was it was wild. It was, it wild. was wild. I can't wait to go back and watch specifically that match on IWTV to see what all we couldn't see from the commentary booth. Yeah, because I, I know there was a lot of chaos in the crowd. So, ah, oh, it's gonna be wild. Can't what? wait to go back and see it. Wow. It was one for the books. So GB, yes, sir. Don't be missing no more shows because you missed a big one. <laughs> don't be missing no more. There are never They're gonna have small to work shows. Around us. I know, right? There are never small SHW shows. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody again on December the eighth for SHW yeah. 57, last show of the year, which should be insane. And already, like I said, already, uh, what did I say, three matches that have uh, been made official. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've got the big uh, championship yes. match, Joe Black versus uh, Judas. Yeah. Uh, Lev has a match against Killjoy. Mm -hmm. Who else did I say? There's a third one in there somewhere. Uh, there was a third. I don't was there a third? Know. Or was there? Th I, think I think there's been three made official. I think we talked about a uh, Hunter versus Chip, but we don't know that's official. Oh, yet. yeah. That might not be. That's Yeah, yeah. That's not official. Okay. Anyways, maybe there's just two. I thought there was. Anyways. It's just unusual yeah. because typically we don't hear about the show, the match announcements until closer to the next show. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised that already we've got a couple that came out of this past show. So wow. 57 is going to be awesome. It's going to be December 8th. Yes. It'll be me and oh, GB's we, that's fourth. The third, that's the third match. Southern Honor Anniversary. I remembered. It's the Infantry and Exotic Oh, yeah. Youth. That's the there you infantry go. Infantry and Exotic Youth. I thought there was three. And you're right. It is our fourth anniversary. That's going to be crazy. There yeah. you go. At, at Southern Honor, yes. At Southern Honor. Yep. Four at years. Southern. December 7th are always special. They are. There you go. Whew. It's going to be a good one. And like you said, it's the last one of the year. So it's going to be big uh, on all all different counts. So I can't wait, man. It's going to be so good. And we're going to be back uh, between now and then right here yes. on this podcast to help build up uh, what's to come. We're going to, I'm sure, hear some more match announcements in the next couple of weeks. And it's going to be exciting. But GB, we are so glad to have you back. I uh, missed you, buddy. Be home. I've missed. Don't you do guys. it no more. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed you guys. <laughs> Mr. your face. So much fun on December the eighth. No doubt about it. Absolutely. Well, we will be back and see you next week right here on this very podcast. But until then, this has been S H W. This is our wrestling. Bye.